story in the war on terror. Federal authorities are warning local law enforcement agencies they need to be on the lookout for homegrown extremists. This warning comes after Daniel Patrick Boyd was arrested in North Carolina last week. Here he is. Authorities say Boyd was the ringleader of aspiring American-bred terrorists organizing right here on U.S. soil. The Department of Homeland Security says these individuals are especially dangerous because they can travel abroad undetected to learn terrorism techniques and then come back and live quietly among us while recruiting others. Joining us to talk about this new warning is Frank Gaffney, president of the Center for Security Policy and former deputy assistant secretary of defense. Frank, it's always very good to have you here. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Jamie. Because a new warning, a lot of us think about the war on terror that's going on overseas, and I think a lot of Americans maybe don't always remember that we're fighting a war on terror here on homegrown soil. How significant is this new warning given to local police authorities? It's quite significant, obviously. The, the thing that's a little worrying is it doesn't seem as though they've connected the dots to the wellspring of the uh, direction for this sort of terrorism, uh, this jihadism, I think a term they do use. And that is what authoritative Islam calls Sharia. It obliges those who adhere to this strain of Islam to engage in violent jihad wherever practicable. And so when we see the, the Daniel Patrick Boyds, uh, for example, um, who have embraced this program, uh, going abroad training, it, it, it should be one of those sort of uh, early warning indicators that you're likely to have a problem. Similarly, when you look at these Somali uh, residents of America that have come here, we now have a second generation, some of whom the FBI is tracing having gone to Somali uh, for training to uh, apparently uh, practice jihad there, maybe practice it here. And a particularly worrying problem is right here in, in the nation's capital region, Jamie, we have uh, an Islamic Saudi Academy. Just this past week, a federal judge decided that the valedictorian of a class that graduated from there recently um, should be serving life in prison for his jihadist activities and specifically his effort to kill the president of the United States. And this week, on Monday afternoon, the board of, the, uh, of supervisors in Fairfax County is going to consider expanding this Islamic Saudi Academy within minutes of the nation's uh, seat of government. Uh, to e equip it to accommodate 1,200 students who so, will be exposed to this kind of Shiata, uh, Sharia proselytization and jihadist uh, program, I'm so, afraid. So, Frank, that's getting a look at it. And, and then you have Boyd, who did not act alone, according to authorities. There are six other people that were taken into custody for suspected right. terrorist activities. That's in North Carolina, of all places. Oregon, also the same week as that issued warning, here are the six, um, and, and you, so you have North Carolina, you have Oregon, and you have other examples around the country of people using the internet, making these trips undetected, and coming back. What do you know about what training they are actually getting? Because we understand that when they come back to the U.S., authorities say they lie in wait. They don't act right away. So what intelligence gathering is going on, and, and it, what is it based on what we know about the training they're getting? Yeah, Jamie, two points. I, I think it varies. I think some of them are getting more sophisticated training in some of these camps overseas. Some of them that are being recruited to jihadism, uh, to Sharia, in our prison systems are probably, at least within the prisons, only getting sort of the indoctrination into what Sharia requires of them. But they're often coming out of those prisons, going into camps of 35 of them around the United States and Canada operated by a group called Jamaat ul fukra where they're being trained. We know from the training video that was incorporated into a film called Homegrown Jihad, in small arms fire, plastic explosives, uh, carjackings, fire bombings, you name it. So it runs the gamut, but the trouble is that whether it's sophisticated training, whether it's uh, paintballing, these are folks who are seriously pursuing what they believe God is requiring them to do, which is to try to bring about the triumph of Islam, the supplanting of our government, a seditious activity with their own form of uh, Islamic theocracy. And that's what's really at the core here. We've got to alert the American people. I do a, a
syndicated radio program called Secure Freedom Radio. Brigitte Gabrielle, a wonderful woman, Act for America's leader, was talking with me about it this week. And she said, she made the very real point, the American people are our best defense against these kinds of developments. We need their eyes and ears watching for those who are either practicing this violent craft or are perhaps laying in wait to do so. Well, the law enforcement authorities need to be on the alert, but they can't do it alone. You know, they need to, and with all the troops that are fighting a war on terror to keep us safe here, and they're overseas doing it so we can be safe here, the least we can do is keep our eyes open here and report anything exactly. that looks suspicious. Thanks so much, Frank Gaffney. Always good to talk to My you. My pleasure, Jamie. Have a Thank great day. Thank you very day. much for having me. You too.